and that is Mr. Jamarlin Lowe. You guys probably know him as Mr. Kevin, and uh, let me pull up his video here, and we will get him going right now. Hey, good morning, Kevin. You might need to, un uh, Mr. Jamarlin uh, Lowe, you might need to unmute your mic, but go right, right ahead. Hey. hey, hello, hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, how, how you doing? I'm awesome, I'm awesome, happy to be here. Oh, it is so wonderful to have you with us this morning. And yes. Mr. Lowe, if you don't know, boys and girls, that's Mr. Lowe when he was just a little boy. And yeah. Mr. Lowe was a, um, he's an author, and he wrote this great book called Resilient. Um, so Mr. Lowe, tell us a little bit about your journey a little bit to the students. So first of all, where did you, um, did you grow up here in Fresno? I did, I was born and raised in uh, Fresno, California. And I went to nine oh, different elementary, elementary schools. I went to nine sorry, different ones. Nine different elementary schools. Nine different wow. ones. Wow. Um, what was the school that had the biggest impact on you, do you think? Well, each school touched my heart in a different way because I had a teacher who always believed in me at every school. So I learned early that school was the way to go for me. So. I just made sure to always pay attention and, and just listen to the guidance that the teachers had for me. And just living a troubled that. life, living a troubled life, I, I learned to trust the teachers I had. And I was thankful that I had a bunch of special teachers who saw something special in me and it helped me build confidence. I love that. Mr. Lowe, so um, Help me help all our audience understand. So you wrote this book called Resilient. Yes. What does resilient mean? That's a big word for many of our kids. Yes, um, resilient means the ability to overcome things quickly. So basically never dwelling on the last setback and just focusing on the future and, and my my definition of it. Mm. But, but by the book, you know, it just means to spring back quickly or recoil quickly. So, so having to go to nine different schools, you really had to be resilient, didn't you? Oh, yes. Um, I just remember having a difficult first name and the teachers had trouble pronouncing it. And it also caused me slight embarrassment. So mm -hmm. I would be quiet. I was the quiet student a lot because I just could never mm -hmm. connect with the other kids because I was always new, you know, new friends, just new surroundings. And then, yeah. um, so you and I had this conversation and um, so we were talking about that a lot of people know you by the name of Kevin, but yes. Kevin is not your name. What is well, your it's name? My, it's my middle name. It's your middle name. And so, so you name. went to Kevin, you were telling me a little bit about that. Um, you went yeah. to Kevin because you said a lot of people couldn't pronounce your first name. But also there was some there was some challenges with um, uh, what do you call that um, with some a little bit of um, um, a history around um, people when they saw your name about yes. some some social issues with that as well. Don't, wasn't that true? Yes. Yes. So when I would apply for jobs and uh, they would see the name Jamarlin, you mm -hmm. know, I wouldn't get callbacks. So when I switched it to Kevin, they called me instantly. Absolutely. So there's a little bit of that. And we've been talking about that this yeah. year mm -hmm. um, uh, about that and about uh, the big thing we talked about is one tiger, many stripes here at our school. Mm -hmm. And part of that being, um, and this has been in our news a lot lately, and that is um, about acceptance, right? And, yeah. and trust and about uh, a, a little bit, sometimes that we call that racism, right? Where we would yeah. um, judge people like Dr. Martin Luther King, not by the content of their character, but by the color of their skin. Yeah. And that is one thing that we have worked hard here at Thomas to not, not do. We wanna judge people by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin or by their name, yes. correct? Yes, I yes, love that. yes. So in Resilient, um, You've been you now. This is this book you wrote. How long did it take you to write this book? Approximately two years in in the writing phase. You know, I would take a lot of mental breaks because it was therapeutic for me. It was pretty heavy going through all these uh, stories and pouring them out. These are 
a lot of them, about 98% are things I've never spoke of. So wow. it's coming out in the book for the first time. And even- so You had some challenges uh, growing up. Um, oh, yeah. Do you want to share a little bit? And of course, just remember we're a little kid audience. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, most, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced growing up and that you're a tiger. You had to rise up and roar, rising to that challenge. Yeah. Most, most notably uh, was uh, when I first entered college, um, we were uh, evicted out of our place to live. So, I had to find somewhere to live while still trying to be a young college student. And that was pretty difficult. And uh, um, and I embraced diversity because a, a, a white family took me in. I didn't even know them for 24 hours and they let me live with them. Wow. Yeah, so that was, uh, that opened my heart up and, and helped me see the world differently. And another, another challenge was uh, my older brother passed away. And mm. this is when I was in high school. So I was 16 years old. And he was 18 and he, he passed away and he was my guidance. You know, he was like a father figure to me, though we were close in age. So losing him left me to, you know, fare on my own because wow. uh, my mother, my mother was not in the capacity to uh, lead. So you kind of had to be the adult in your family as a young man. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And then having to lose that almost like a father figure to you and your brother was yeah. very difficult, wasn't it? Yes, I, um, I know that some and I know that some of our tigers can relate to that because they have um, they have experienced that as well. So, yeah. you know, uh, Mr. Lowe, the more I've read your book, I know that Michigan has it and others. It's going to be out there pretty soon, but you've been doing some radio and some Internet um, interviews yeah. and stuff about your book recently. Yes. Yes, and I, well, um, I think it's Go ahead. No, I've uh, the next few days I'm I'm booked for different uh, podcasts and different shows. So just getting the story out there and being vulnerable, like it's scary for me, but I have to do it. It is, but telling your story is so important, right? Yes, yes. Uh, because other kids or other uh, young men may see your story and they could say, because a lot of times when we're growing up, I know when I was growing up, I felt like, well, nobody feels like I feel. Yeah. But that's really not true, is it? No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, there. many of us have difficult times in life, but sometimes the important part of sharing our story, even in writing, is a, they call it cathartic. That means it helps heal yes. um, to get that out. And you talked about that, I think, in a couple of interviews I saw you on where you talked about how healing this has been for you. Yes, yes. So so yes. writing is really a great way of expressing emotion, isn't it? Yes, it is. You put it down on paper and you 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 let go of the things that hold you back when you write them down. I love that. I think yeah. that is absolutely awesome. Hey, Mr. Lowe, thank you so much for joining us. And then if people want to get your book or want to see it, where can they get that at? Uh, they can go on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles, or they can uh, go to my website and request a signed copy from me directly, which is resilientjamarlinlow.com. Jamarlinlow.com. Awesome. So if you see Mr. Lowe around, if you see Mr. Lowe around, you have his book, you're going to have to bring it by and get it signed. Yes. So yes. that is awesome. Well, Mr. Lowe, I am so appreciative of you uh, telling your story. I have learned so much more about you by your story and just the resilience of who you are. Um, if you've never had an opportunity to talk to Mr. Lowe, he's probably one of the most happiest, positive people I have ever met. Um, and you have you are definitely not that little boy that uh, was kind of shy and stuff anymore. You you have really come out of your shell a lot and I appreciate you telling your story. Thank you Thank so much. And what a great example to your own kids. Um, yes of what it means that we're not perfect, but, right. um, and we all have a story and our story is not done yet. We can continue to work on that story every day, right? Yes, sir. I love that. Hey, thank you so much, Mr. Lowe. Thank it's, you. I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. All right, see, see you, you guys. Have a great later. day. All right.
Wow. Thank you. And you have some interviews you're doing tomorrow too. Is that correct? Oh yes, I'm I'm busy. I'm booked. <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. Right. So you can thank all you. say, hey, we know him. That's wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Lowe, for sharing your story. All right. Thank you guys. You got it. All right.